welcome to another episode of I Dig Dead People. Uh, I was on vacation in the Austin, Texas area probably about a year ago when my husband and I decided to check out some of the area north of the city. We visited uh, the Round Rock and Georgetown areas, looking at some model homes, admiring um, the small historic downtown of Georgetown, which is really fun and just a great little town. And while we were driving around, it hit me that Georgetown, Texas, that was a name I'd come across during my research. And I'm like, why do I know that name? You've ever, ever had those moments? So this was a first for me. Uh, I quickly pulled out my phone and opened my Ancestry app. And I just love when I have my family research with me 24-7 and it, just for such a reason as this. So sure enough, I found that my three times great-grandfather was actually buried in a family cemetery outside of Georgetown, Texas. And my next question was, could I find the cemetery and would the current owners let me visit it? His burial is well documented on Find a Grave and there was information about the current owners there. So that allowed me to look up their business in Georgetown and I was able to get a number to call. And I reached a really pleasant woman named Peggy who was associated with the trust that currently owns the land. And she graciously coordinated a visit with her ranch hand to allow me access to the family cemetery. Uh, she's actually done this for me twice now. Uh, this was about, the first time was about two years ago. And then uh, on this actual visit where I was like, whoa, do I know someone here in Georgetown, Texas? Um, the second time was a visit to actually go and video um, my visit there so I could get that down. And uh, she's just been so awesome to allow me to do that twice. And I was able to video last spring, and I'm including this video uh, later in uh, this episode. But let's back up for a minute. I need to explain who I found and what his story is in the context of my family and the area where he's buried. So I'll start with my great-grandmother, Bertha McCall. She was born April 26, 1909 in Throck, Morton, Texas. Um, and I have a picture of her here. And I also have a copy of her delayed birth certificate. Uh, delayed birth certificates were filed after the 1930s to allow individuals to obtain a social security number. Um, most births before 1930 were home births. And most states had little or no recordings of births before the 1930s. So in order to file for a social security number uh, to obtain social security benefits later in life, individuals had to have a copy of a birth certificate. Well, if the state wasn't collecting them and you were born at home, then you didn't have one. So they came up with delayed birth certificates. If you were uh, born before the 1930s, you could apply for one of these delayed birth certificates. And the individual would provide proof of their existence, their birth, using either their own children's birth certificates um, or witness testimony about when they were born or any other documentation they had that would help to prove their birth date. Uh, this information was entered into a delayed birth certificate and then it was filed with the state. Uh, Bertha's delayed birth certificate was filed in 1969 and she had documentation of two of her children's births. One of them, it doesn't have the names there probably for privacy reasons, but one of them was my grandmother and I could tell by the year of the birth. Um, she also had a witness, her aunt Mary Mullen stated that her birth was April 26, 1909 in Throckmorton County, Texas. And her aunt states that her parents are John Hugh McCall, born in Texas, and Ethel Winnie Brooks, born in Alabama. So this was excellent information to continue my family tree having the parents' names and their birthplaces. So I began looking for John Hugh McCall in the records first. Uh, John Hugh McCall was born uh, December 1st, 1875 in Texas, and he died January 16th, 1964 in Hamlet, Texas. And I have a picture of him here as well. I've been able to find John McCall and his wife Ethel and their children in each census record that we have available to us. Uh, an important one, though, which affirms that I have the correct person, is the 1910 census, which I have here. In this census, John, Ethel, and his children, Mabel, Thelma, Artie, and my great-grandmother, Bertha, they're all in the census. And it was taken in Throckmorton County, Texas, which is where my great-grandmother's delayed birth certificate stated she was born. This census also confirms that John was born in Texas and his wife, Ethel, was born in Alabama. 
Additionally, it confirms that Bertha's delayed birth certificate was accurate on her birth date because she's listed as 11 months old in this census. And the census was enumerated on the 20th of April, 1910. So Bertha was just six days shy of her first birthday. I just love when the records and the pe people's memories are so accurate, because this does not always happen. I then wanted to find a marriage record for John and Ethel McCall, just to complete my research. I did have to write to Williamson County, Texas to get a record, and I have that here. John Hugh McCall married Ethel Winnie Brooks on October 6, 1900 in Williamson County, Texas. I knew they were married in Williamson County because I had found John Hugh McCall in Williamson County with his parents in a 1900 census during my research. Uh, here's a copy of it. Uh, John was not yet married in this census, just a few months off, um, because the census was enumerated on the 29th of June in 1900, and he was married in October. So at the time, John was living with his father, Oliver H. McCall, his mother, Nancy, his sisters, Fanny, Mary, Ada, and Lily, and his brother, Oliver. His birth is listed as December 1875 in Texas. Um, the census lists him as a farm laborer, and it's more than likely he worked on his father's farm, which his father owned. John and his siblings can read and write, however. This census states that his, John's parents cannot read or write. So it took some research to find John with his family in Williamson County because when I found him with his wife in the later censuses, they were living in Stonewall County, Texas. So I found John in this 1900 census record in Texas, and then I had to confirm that I had the correct John. Uh, a birth record was not available, which didn't surprise me at all. So I began looking for his parents, Oliver and Nancy, in other records. I found Oliver Perry Hazard McCall on Find a Grave. His bio stated that he was born the 13th of June, 1852. By the way, that's my son's birthday, June 13th. And he died the 28th of April, 1901 in Williamson County, same county as the census record. And I have a picture of his gravestone here. So what came to help me later was that Oliver also went by Perry McCall in his lifetime as well, just like it, on his, it says on his gravestone. So I often would find records in that name instead of Oliver. So then I tried to find a marriage record for Oliver and Nancy, or Perry and Nancy. Perhaps some information on that document would confirm that these were John's parents and I had the correct person. I mean, I had found him on Find a Grave, but um, that information is always input by other people. They're not primary sources. So it's a great place to start and to um, get your research going if you're kind of stuck. And you can kind of, you can start following some other paths when you get some other names, but you really do still have to find those primary sources that back up that information on Find a Grave. So I was able to find Perry McCall and Nancy Whitmer's marriage license in Williamson County, Texas. Uh, they were married October 17th, 1872 in Georgetown, Williamson County, Texas by the Justice of the Peace. I now had John's mother's maiden name from this record, which was Whitmer. So I went back to that 1900 census that I had found John in, but wasn't sure if it was his family. I looked at it again, and I saw that their neighbor was Asa Whitmer, same uh, last name as Nancy before she was married. Further research would confirm that Asa Whitmer was Nancy Whitmer's brother. When I find the McCalls in the 1880 census, same area, same property, their neighbors were Nancy's brother, Asa, again, on one side of the property. And then on the other side of the property was Nancy's mother, Amanda Whitmer. And then next to Nancy's mother is her maternal grandmother, Nancy Fish. So further research would end up confirming all of these relationships. But it also helped me confirm that um, I had the right John McCall with his parents, Perry and Nancy McCall. The last record I was able to locate was John McCall's death record, and I have that here. The informant on his record was his wife, Ethel, and she states that his parents are Perry McCall and Nancy Whitmer. All of this research together confirmed I had the right John with his parents, Oliver Perry McCall and Nancy Whitmer McCall in Williamson County, Texas. So that was just great. So if you remember, in the beginning of my story, I mentioned that I was vacationing in the Georgetown, Texas area and realized I may have ancestors there. 
I confirmed that my three times great grandfather was buried in the family cemetery outside Georgetown, Texas. That person was Oliver Hazard Perry McCall. With a quick phone call, I was able to visit the family ranch, now owned by a trust and maintained as a wildlife refuge. And this is where Perry McCall is buried. I have some video here of that visit to the land, the family ranch, and the burial um, cemetery. And I will show that as I'm going through and telling you about how the cemetery was found. Um, the wonderful lady who I spoke with at the trust told me that um, the trust purchased about 15 acres of land and they began clearing some of that land of the tall grass that was growing there. And at one point, a worker came across Perry McCall's headstone. Um, it's a rather large headstone, so once you clear some grass out, I can see how, like, whoa, there's a headstone here. Um, so the people realized it was a family cemetery. And this was further confirmed when several other stones were found. None of them are inscribed, but when you, um, if you see in the video and when you're there visiting, the stones are definitely set in the ground meant to be a headstone to mark an actual grave. Uh, they just weren't inscribed with anything. And they were found laid out near Perry McCall's headstone. So when these workers cleared the area that contained the stones, they also put up a wooden like, stockade fence around the little cemetery. And I just so appreciate their respect upon finding this family cemetery and enclosing it. And I mean, it was lost to us for a while. And, and then to be found again um, as these workers were clearing the area is just amazing and wonderful. And now all of the ancestors of Perry McCall can um, see where he's buried and the property where he lived. And that's just just amazing for someone like me who um, really appreciates the family history there. So it's suspected by myself and several other family members that Nancy's parents, Henry Whitmer and Amanda Fish Whitmer are buried there as well. Um, it's also believed that her grandparents, Joseph Martin Fish and Nancy Deitches Fish are buried there as well. Um, all under those stones that don't have inscriptions, so we're, we're not exactly sure which particular uh, plot is which person. But this was my family. Like, I was standing at the burial site on the land they had once owned and ranched and worked. And I was just so humbled and blessed to be able to experience this. So uh, Perry McCall was only 49 when he died and was buried on his property in Williamson County, Texas. I have not been able to locate a death record for him, so it's unknown what caused his death so young. I mean, that's still considered relatively young even in that time period. However, having visited his land, I came across him um, while I was kind of walking around the cemetery outside of that little stockade fence and there were like a mound of stones right next to it. And funny enough, when you look at deeds for the property, it talks about these mounds of stones. They kind of used them as um, in the meets and bounds of the size of the property. But anyway, so I'm walking around this like mound of like flat stones. And as I'm getting ready to step, I hear a very familiar rattle having been being from Colorado, I know what that is. So I froze in place with literally a foot in the air and watched as a rattlesnake kind of slithered off and let me know that he was there. Thankfully, before he tried to bite me, um, he didn't. He just slithered off. And I kind of wondered, hmm, is it possible that Perry McCall may have been bit by a rattlesnake? Wouldn't surprise me. So in my research uh, of Perry McCall, it was interesting. I noticed that the land that he owned, this land that I was on, it was sold in two separate transactions before Perry's death in 1901. Um, the largest transaction was in 1876. Perry and his wife Nancy sold this land, 200 acres, to John Wood. This John Wood is not a relative of theirs. I've not been able to find any connection uh, in any of my research, yet the deed was not filed with the county until 1909. So sold in 1876, not filed with the county till 1909. 
that's 30 years pass before it's it's sold but before it's filed with the county and it's eight years after Perry's death so I just found that really odd like a buyer was waiting 30 years to occupy their land I mean essentially when it's not filed it's not public record that it's owned by the new buyer so that just seemed odd to me I know that the family continued to live on the property because they're enumerated in census records there and Perry's buried there in 1901. I mean, I don't think they brought Perry over to be buried in the family cemetery when it was owned by somebody else. I mean, they were still living there. Um, so this is a mystery I'm still researching and trying to solve. It's kind of weird and interesting and I ask people on some of my genealogy groups what they might think and so far um, we haven't come up with anything really so maybe further research will bring some light on this but I guess what I'm saying with this whole episode is if you find yourself on a vacation in an area where your ancestors might have lived say take some time to check it out see if you can find the land they lived on see if you can find a cemetery or burial because there is absolutely nothing like walking on the property that your ancestors walked and worked and standing before their grave on their property. It's just amazing. So if you enjoyed this episode of I Dig Dead People, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the like button. And make sure to ring that bell because it'll um, give you notifications of the next time we have an episode available. That's all for now. Thanks for watching this episode of I Dig Dead People. Mm -hmm.